In the years when I was um, teaching world religions at Ohio Northern University, it registered that I kept hearing the same phrase repeated often by many people, college students and others as well, uh, and it was this, I'm spiritual but not religious. And I was curious to understand what people meant, all the people who would say this, and ask some to kind of elaborate. And it seems that spiritual or spirituality was in this understanding a kind of personal or private way of knowing God, way of relating to God, anywhere from kind of a creative force in the world to um, uh, some kind of omnipotent being. Uh, but that the religious part of it, I'm spiritual, not religious, was uh, the connection with a community, with an institution, a denomination. That's what not uh, they were not interested in, but their own kind of personal private way of understanding and relating to God. So it caused me to um, think about that word spiritual and spirituality and actually to do some research on that word. And what I discovered is that the first time we find the word spirituality in print uh, is in, in Latin, spiritualitus, and it was first coined by St. Augustine in his autobiography, Confessions. And what Augustine meant by the word spirituality was this. The inrush of God's spirit into human life. God making God's self known and present in human experience, in human encounter. And so there's nothing that you or I could do to make that happen. It really goes to what is a primary biblical, scriptural uh, metaphor, in a sense, and that is, God initiates, we respond. God is the one who always initiates his grace, his presence, his spirit into human life, and we receive that and respond to it. Like I said, nothing we can do can make it happen. The only thing we can do is be open to receiving it. In our Catholic life together, we have not a relationship with some vague personal force. We have a relationship with a person, with God in Jesus, who sends his spirit into our human experience, into our lives and our relationships and our minds and our hearts. So the most fundamental stance or the most fundamental, uh, the most foundational posture of a follower of Jesus is to listen, to be open, to be malleable, to be ready and alert, to receive God's presence when God initiates it, to receive God's spirit when God wishes that spirit to come into our lives. And it happens in so many ways, of course, again, in our Catholic life, we're privileged to have these privileged moments of the sacraments when that inrush of God's Spirit comes to us. We know it comes through word, through others, through the stories of the saints, uh, through the experience of prayer and all of its varieties. But it's God's initiative, and our stance is always to listen and to be ready to receive it and respond. Now, we see in Scripture today what happens, the messes that we get into as humans, both individually and collectively, when we don't listen, when we're not open to God's initiative and God's movement. Uh, that reading from Isaiah about the vineyard. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. So the house of Israel, God's holy chosen people, are the ones who God initiated his presence into their lives and established them to share his law and his love with all. But they didn't listen. And they didn't listen to the prophets as they came, each one by one, to call them back 
to that original holiness, and we see the mess. Instead of producing ripe and wonderful fruit, it produces sour grapes. The Lord looks down and says, I wanted justice, but it's, I get bloodshed. I wanted judgment, but instead, hear the outcry of the poor who you are not taking care of. And Jesus knew his scripture. He knew this passage from Isaiah. And so he bases his parable today about the vineyard on this passage. And again, saying, listening, this posture of of being open to listen, to receive the Spirit of God, is the only way that we can accomplish our mission of bearing fruit for the kingdom of heaven. And you and I can get distracted to all the other voice from all the other voices that happen in our world. So the call really is to remain open and listening and receptive to the voice of God. And that will all, always call us to bear fruit for the kingdom. It will always call us to actions that glorify God that build that kingdom of justice, of compassion, of peace, of goodwill, of understanding. So I invite us this week to reflect on this and to kind of consider the ways, the many ways that we work at being open, the ways that we are listening to how God is speaking to us, to how the Spirit chooses to rush into our minds and hearts to call us to building the kingdom. How indeed are we listening?